if you look at these export control regulations and, and the reaction of the share prices thereafter, investors knew they were coming. But the potential scope has turned out to be broader than expected, with one of the most debated aspects being the rule around the ability of US persons to support the development of integrated sex circuits within China without a license. As a result, investors have been concerned about incremental demand destruction and greater disruption associated with realignment of the global supply chains. So yes, on one hand, potentially, these rules, these extra incentives could spur demand in US and Europe with the introduction of the CHIPS Act. But on the other hand, this elevated level of tensions could trigger end demand destruction and more or less contribute towards uncertainty. That's why the net impact after these measures were announced was relatively negative as evident from the share prices and the move in the SOX, which is the benchmark index for semiconductors. Um, and it was only a few years ago that uh, those in the tech industry thought there were no borders for the product that they sold, and clearly times have changed since then, uh, arguably uh, around uh, President Trump at the time. That said, now as we take a look at these curbs that are going into the semiconductor market, how much is that going to skew the demand story? Because if you look at the supply chain, I gather a lot of DRAM um, is manufactured in China, that you've got these uh, chips that go into computers, for instance, that may be impacted, an area that we thought might be declining a little bit on the back of the COVID pandemic trends. So what, to what extent do we skew the demand story because of these fake borders going up? Again, uh, it, it, it's a question on which we can, can debate for some time, but to, to keep it simple and short, I would say uh, as it relates to China's role in the broader supply chain, yes, it's an important constituent, but the leading edge manufacturing bulk of it still happens outside China. Uh, and therefore you could argue that the impact as it relates to that should be limited. But what's more important to keep in mind is China is very tightly integrated across the broader supply chain, right from materials all the way up to end product assembly. And, and that's what we need to think about. And also China, given the size of the economy, is a big driver of the end demand. And at this stage, investors are debating what potential ret retaliation measures are likely to be. But over a long, long period of time, this should all shake itself out. And therefore, we believe companies like ASML are still very well positioned because the structural trends are there in terms of driving increases in data consumption, digital transformation, and the like. But in the near term, there are more hiccups along the way. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.